Greetings gamers, last week I gave you my first impressions on a new piece of map making software called Wonderdraft. Well, a lot of people seem to be really interested in the program, so today I'm going to run you through a quick tutorial and show you how to use Wonderdraft. The version I'm showing you today is version 0.7.2. It's not the most up-to-date version, but it is the most recent stable version as of the time of recording. Bear in mind that this is an early access program, so it is likely that we'll run into some bugs or some crashes during the tutorial, but that's all to be expected as part of the testing process. If you enjoy this video and you want to pick up a copy of Wonder Draft, I will leave a link in the video description for you down below, but let's dive straight into it. So once you've opened up the program, head up to the top left, click on new, and you'll be presented with a wizard asking you for your map size and your theme. I've got my map size set up to be A3 or the equivalent of A3 if it were printed and I'm going to choose pastel as the theme for today. So we just click OK and it will start by generating out a sea, an ocean. I like to start before I do any land work by doing some work on the water. I like to go over to the C tab and click on the water appearance option and I like to increase my saturation. I like nice bright and bold colours in my maps. And I also reduce the amount of stain that's present in the water as well. So you can see it removes a lot of the darkness from it and helps the water disappear in the background so that you can focus on the land of your map. If you decide that you want to use a different theme you can change it in the program itself. You head up to theme up here and then you can change from between black and white, eastward, feudal, paper, pastel and worn. Eastward gives a sort of middle earth look to it. Feudal has a really nice water texture if I just close this and zoom in. You've got these little wave icons which is a really nice touch. Paper obviously makes it look as if it is drawn on some parchment. And then pastel and worn are almost the same but they have a slightly different colour palette. Pastel is my favourite so that's what we're going to be using today. So once you've decided what you want your water to look like, it's time to make some land. Now you've got two options for this. If you click into the land tab, you can either use the land mast brush and you can go in and draw in some land really easily. Now this just gives a rounded brush so you can see that the edges are very round, which is fine for filling in um, big sections of land, but I don't particularly like that look for coastlines. If you want to make coastlines, I suggest using the raised land mass tool, which has a much rougher and more random edge to it and gives a better coastline look. So if you wish, you can draw in your coastlines. This is great if you want to make an existing map in Wonder Draft. But if you're making a brand new map from scratch, I thoroughly recommend using the generator. Now, this has different options for your pattern. You can do uniform, which will give you sort of a zoomed in look at a country. You could do continent, which gives you a, a big island with water all around. An archipelago, which is a collection of islands, or an atoll, which is a round of islands. I like to choose continent, and then you can choose the roughness and the level of detail that you want. I'm going to whack those both up reasonably high, and then just click generate and wait for that to come up. So you can see straight away we've got a nice baseline for our map. We've got a few small islands and some interesting coastlines. The next thing that I want to show you is how to edit these pre-generated maps to make them fit what you're after a little bit better. And for that, we're going to use the raise and lower land mass tools. So we're going to start with the raise land mass and we're going to go in and just look for any areas that I want to add to. So I'll just change my brush size over here on the right. 
and I don't like the look of these small lakes here so I'm just going to fill those in. It's just a case of going around finding areas that you don't like the look of from the random generated land mass and changing them up. Overall I'm reasonably happy with how this looks. So we'll go on to the lower landmass tool and we'll use this just to clean up the coastline. In certain areas you can see just here it adds small little artifacts that don't look very good on the final map. I like to go all around and just get rid of these artifacts and small elements that don't look quite right. Once you've generated your landmass, the next thing that I like to do before I start adding detail is work in the climates. Now, if you like, you could have some really unusual and crazy climates where the poles of your world are placed in weird and wonderful positions and they aren't the standard north-south. I'd encourage against this though, because it's much easier for anyone looking at your map to understand what's going on if it has a similar look to earth so if the poles are in the north and the south and if it is coldest at the poles hottest at the equator it makes it much easier for people viewing the map to understand what's happening so to add our climates we're going to be using the paint tool and we're going to start off by adding a custom color the colour I like to use is A7AE7E. I think it gives a really nice look to the map and I'll show you that here. So you can see it gives a, a nice green tone to the map. So I'm going to start out by just brushing that colour in the sort of top and so from, we'll go from the bottom of this island to maybe here. And the great thing about the brush tool in Wonderdraft is that it doesn't go outside of your landmass. So you'll never colour in your oceans. The next thing I want to do is I want to add some white or off-white colours to represent the snowy areas and the ice caps so we'll do up here and I'm not going to go into the green because we're going to blend that in a moment. To blend the colours together I like to use this more rough style brush and just dab between the two colours. So I'll get the white and then I'll get the green just go between them like this and I'll do seven or eight passes of this in different areas and I might go a bit further down in one area and then I might decide that it's too much and just come back and do that. Then what I like to do is take my base green colour increase the transparency and just sort of go over to blend them in ever so slightly. If I zoom in here you can see that it's a much more natural gradation between the two now and I might also do the same with my white so get a really faded and transparent white and really softly just go between these two layers here like so so it's a much more a much softer and more natural transition than you get down here so again softly going up with my white and then I'll go back down with my green to get a nice blend between the two Next thing I want to do is do the same for some desert area. So we've got some colour laid down on our map. The next thing that I want to do is start adding some mountains. 
there is a huge amount of depth that you can go into when adding mountains to your map. You can go very realistic with it and draw out some plate tectonics first and add mountains where the plates meet or add features based on where the different plates of your world interact with one another. But for most fantasy maps, for things like a D&D &D campaign, that's not really necessary. So we're just going to go into the symbols tool and grab some mountains. And I like using this pencil version here. And we're just going to find a scale that we're happy with. There we are. That's a good looking scale. And we will start out right at the top. Mountains typically form in long chains and a good way to decide on where you want islands to be placed is to take your mountain chain and drag it off the edge like that. And then come back in, add your mountain range like this, maybe it comes down here and then maybe it goes off around here. And then what I like to do is grab my eraser tool and just delete a few of the mountains. Maybe I'll delete some here and delete some here. And now I can see that I've got three islands that I'm going to make. So back into my land tool, grab my raise land mass and I'm just going to build some land around these mountains. Once you've added your islands with some mountains on them, you want to go back in and colour them appropriately. Don't worry about the mountains getting coloured by this just yet. We'll come back in and tweak that at a later stage. But you can see how we've added a few more islands there with this large mountain range. And then you just want to go through and add mountains anywhere that you like throughout the rest of the map. Once our mountains are added, it's time to add some forests. Now, we do this using the forest tool here, and there are nine different presets. I like using this evergreen one here. and I'm just going to zoom in just to get a sense of the scale I'm going to use. There we are. I think that's good. One of the great things about colouring in our climates before we start adding details is it's really easy to see where large forests are going to have formed now. These green bands are going to be fairly good places for forests to form. And I like to start out by adding some forest around my mountains. For adding in any vegetation and forest into the Arctic area, I really like using the sketch evergreens. So we'll just make sure that our scale is similar to our coloured ones. And we'll go in and add a few patches of icy forests. Now that we know where all our major mountain ranges and our forests are, I like to start adding in rivers. And to do this, you go into land and you click on the river tool. I find it easier to use a mouse to add rivers than using the pen on a graphics tablet. But to do it, you just zoom in and you click a point, drag it to where you want it to end, double click, and it adds a river. Once I've added one line, if I want to add some deltas to the river mouth, I'll start my river in the ocean and drag it up like this. And then do that several times and you can see how it creates a nice delta look. And if there's anywhere where it looks particularly untidy, I just go back in with my landmass tool and clean it up. Once all the major rivers are added to your map, before adding all the finishing detail, I like to go in and add my settlements. The reason I do this is because it's much easier for me to place the settlements 
and then add details around it than it is to add all the details and then have to remove them to put settlements in. So all you do is you head over to the Symbols tool and click on the Symbols tab and you've got a variety of options. You could use some of these sort of 3D looking buildings to add settlements and I'll show you an example of that now. I'm not a huge fan of doing it like this because I think it really messes with the sense of scale. What I prefer to do instead is use the simple symbols. Click on and add them for cities, towns and a capital city. Once all of my settlements are added, I like to go in and add all the finishing details. I start with grass tools from the tree tab and I start by just going in and add in some grass to follow the rivers. I prefer to dot the grass in rather than dragging it because I think it makes it quite cluttered and messy looking. So I prefer to just add it in one at a time wherever is needed. And I'll do this for all of the rivers. And then the next thing I do is I will grab the hill tool and get it sized appropriately like this and I'll go in and I'll add hill regions between and then I might go back and add some grassland here and there around the hills like this and then maybe from time to time I'll add sections of trees by the hills as well. So I might add small little bushels in between the main forests. And then I do this for the whole map. And once I've done that, I'll show you what I do to add finishing touches to the main body of the map. Once I've finished adding all the major details to my map, I like to tie everything together. And one way I do this is by colouring the mountains. So if I just zoom in here with the brush tool in the land tab, I like to go in and just color my mountains. There we go. If I just zoom out, you can see here that it makes the mountains just stand out that little bit more and helps add to the transition between the different biomes. So I use a slightly darker color than my desert color. On each of these symbols, if you can find the right spot, one click will fill in the whole symbol. And I do this for all of the mountains that aren't in the snowy biome. Once you've finished adding all of the details that you want, the last thing I do is add the labels for the locations. So to do this, you go to the labels tab, click the labels icon, and you've got four different presets. You've got labels for cities, which are slightly larger, labels for towns which are slightly smaller, labels for water which are much larger and a little bit transparent, and then labels for terrain which are the same. So we're going to start out with some towns and we just click anywhere we want to make it and we'll start with Connington. And then perhaps we want to name some water elements. And maybe on the other side out here, we might have the endless sea. And there you have it, a finished map. Hopefully this video has given you a look at how to use WonderDraft. As I said at the start, if you're interested in the program, I'll have a link below to where you can get a hold of it. If you've already picked WonderDraft up and started making your own maps, please share them in the comments because I would love to see them. But until next time, happy gaming. Thanks for watching. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below for new content every single Friday. And if you want to keep watching, well, there's another couple of videos for you to watch just over there. Happy gaming.